Good morning guys. This is the second time I record this because the first time I forgot to turn out turn on this microphone. But it's no problem. We're gonna record it again because why not? We have time. So today I woke up at 12.30 but only got out of bed after one. So that's not a good thing because the plan was yesterday night to finish one of uh, the vlogs but I didn't do that because I stayed to play poker until 2.30 a.m. and then um, I just came home, made a shower, went to sleep and decided that I'm gonna do that today when we're waking up earlier which didn't happen but still I'm gonna do that now and I'm gonna take advantage that uh, I'm home alone and uh, is gone walking she walks, that's what she do, she does. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna take advantage of that, finish that vlog, and then, very, very exciting, put in some poker study. Uh, I haven't done that since I came here and I don't have to neglect it because this is what I do. I study and I play poker. Another interesting thing that I might want to do today is to listen to that Joe Rogan podcast that just came a few days ago with none other than Neil deGrasse Tyson. These are two of my favorite people. I used to sleep with Neil deGrasse Tyson. I used to fall asleep listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> and uh, yeah, his voice is uh, exactly tuned to, to my mind and puts me to sleep. And I'm also interesting, interested in what he's talking about. Aliens, uh, the beginning of time and the world and alien civilizations and um, landing to the moon and politics and all all those type of things I'm really interested in Anders calling what does she need what do you need right now da ce să fac cu că dragă la birou all right where were we I have no fucking idea what I was talking about aliens hmm. anyway I'm gonna Go and do my thing and see you later. Hello, some donuts for you. Mm. Cheers. So good. Beautiful. Can you believe this thing has zero sugar? And gluten free. <laughs> Hello guys, it's time for another poker session. It's the second time I record this message because I forgot to turn on the microphone. This happens quite a lot lately. I, uh, I need to learn my lesson already. Anyway, uh, I want to tell you how I just listened for an audiobook while walking from home to the casino, a 15 minutes walk. And I used Blinkist, uh, an app, which makes a summary of your uh, of an audiobook so you can listen uh, the most important important information in a book in 15 minutes or even less um, they give you like 10 15 blinks they call it uh, with the main ideas the principle behind this is the 80 20 principle or the pareto principle which states that 80 percent of the results come from 20% of your action. Uh, translated into books, this means that you can take 80% of the information contained in one book by reading only a specific 20% of uh, that book. Or having someone make a summary for you and you just listen or read that summary. That's what Blinkist does and to be honest, I don't have any affiliation with them, I don't have any interest. Uh, you just search on your app and find Blinkist. I totally recommend it. It will change the way you read books or listen to books, especially if you're like me and want to get more done in less time and want to read more books. This is one area of my life where I was always trying to improve and read more and more and more and always have like a 100 list book that I want to go through. And this Blinkist app helps me 
go through them faster and if I find a book that I'm really interested in then I can go ahead and buy that Kindle version or that audible version of the book and that way I I can focus on exactly what I care and I can get the information I want in the specific areas or domains that I am interested in so uh, I'm thinking about sharing my books every day with you what I listen and what I'm interested in. Today's book was Seinfeldia. It was about how Seinfeld became one of the most successful uh, TV shows of all time. So check this out. Uh, I really lo loved Seinfeld. If you're, if you're younger and you haven't watched it yet, uh, I totally recommend you should do that right away. Because it's, it's really, I think, in my opinion, the best show ever. Now, moving back to poker, uh, it's 6 p.m. and I hope we don't stay a lot on the waiting list, but let's get inside and make some money. Yo, another session done, uh, another successful day today and the theme of the day is being patient and how being patient really long term will bring you money when playing especially live poker and today's session is a proof of that because the first like three hours of the session i own, i got dealt almost no cards and the cards i got dealt uh that were playable i played them but i missed every flop so I had like king 10 offset in the big blind I would call miss the flop like five six seven uh, or king jack flop king ace seven deuce stuff like that so continue uh, continuously missing flops then when I open pre-flop I get three bet, bet a lot and I have a hand from my folding range and I just kept the discipline, just fold, fold, fold. Even when I had marginal hands that I felt the need to open, I would just fold them because I, I knew they are not in my opening range and I kept to the discipline. I kept to, the, to, to my pre-flop ranges. Uh, I uh, played discipline post-flop and waited, 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 waited for the good opportunities and the opportunities came so um, yeah i have three hands that i want to share with you three of the biggest hands of the night that made me a really decent winner for today uh, the first hand was uh, pocket kings in uh, i was in big blind middle position opens to 400 small blind calls and i make it 2000 with pocket kings in the big blind and only the middle position calls the flop counts 553 five, uh, with a flush draw and the pot is 4400 i bet 2000s so or half pot i sized the bet to to have like 8000 uh, on the turn and uh, my opponent was left with only 7.5 thousand so i sized it so that i can push all in on the turn uh, which I want to do with maybe a king or stuff like that or flush rows and open cards yeah so I make it 2000 and he pushes all, all in and of course I call and he has pocket tens and we win so we waited the, um, our opponent's mistake and it came because the games are good why not and then again pocket kings a few rounds later we have again pocket kings uh, in the cutoff we open to 400, the button calls and the big blind calls as well. And we go three way to a flop of 773 uh, rainbow. Uh, we see bet 400 into 1200 and the button raises us to 1200. Uh, big blind folds and we call, of course. We see the turn which doubles the three. So now it's 7733. And uh, we check and he bets again 26 hundred into three thousand six hundred and of course we have to call here one more time he might have a seven but considering we bet small and 
how players are playing here in Macau. I think they will uh, very often race here with uh, like pocket nines because why not or just random bluffs like king 10 offsuit or or even a three which now beats as a three but I don't think a three be uh, bets so big on the turn so we still feel confident and the plan is to call the turn and the river as well. The river comes in nine and we check and he checks it back and I win. So my guess is that he had a pocket pair and he just raised and he was thinking that he's getting value or so from his hand and he just checked it back on the river. On this next hand we have a king offsuit in middle position. We uh, bump it up to 400 button calls, big blind calls, exactly last, like last hand and flop comes king 10 10 again a double board um, with two hearts we see bet again a one third size pot and uh, big uh, the button folds and only the big blind calls the turn comes another king 2000 the pot and we see bet 2200 um, I think I could go bigger I don't think he folds a 10 here of course we split with the king but uh, I don't know I don't want to go too big because I still want to get value from uh, Queen 10 or stuff like that he was a weak recreational player so I think he might call here with the draw and we we bet 1200 and he may raises to 2500 of course we call in case he's bluffing uh, you know in case he's getting crazy with some whatever hands ace high or a pair that now is for fate and he doesn't know what to do. River is a queen and he thinks for a while, he puts some chips on the side, he's counting all his stack, of course he covers, he has more, we, I have more than 10,000 behind so he thinks for a while and then finally checks and at this point I think he just had some sort of a bluff and now he's giving up or he might hit the queen so my goal is to target the queen and yeah I decided to bet 2500 and he calls I win. Of course there were many other hands like smallish type of hands, a few uh, bluff catchers that I made uh, that were good, um, only one I think I, I uh, called the river and uh, I was not good uh, and, and other than that our hands were pretty clear we didn't have the marginal situation of course we run good and at the end of the day we book a win of 24,000 Hong Kong dollars um, so it's a good start of trip here in Macau we have after uh, first losing day we have then four consecutive winning days so 4 to 1 it's uh, our score here in Macau at the Venetian which is right there you cannot see it in this uh, image but that's pretty much it for today tomorrow I think I'm gonna take a day off and we are not sure what we're gonna do in our day off but I'll try to vlog about it and you will see tomorrow what will happen goodbye